Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video, We're doing JMA Friday today, having a look at the weather for the coming month from the Japanese and CFSB2 models. This will take us to the end of May, so we're going to go to, through to the um, end of spring uh, 2016 with this update. It's been quite a cold spring so far, particularly April is going to come out colder than average, I think. Uh, so it will be determined by May whether this season ends up colder than average, warmer than average, or around the season, seasonal average. It will depend what happens in the coming months. So I'll have a look and see what the CFS and uh, JMA models are updating for May in a second. But before I get on with that, just say about the ads. There's links to articles on all the pages. Have a browse through the widgets and click through the links if there's any articles that you're interested in. And thanks so much for doing that. There's video ads on most of the pages. I may open up the content. We watch them, they'll close back up again. It helps to pay for gasworthies.com. It allows us to stay completely free. We don't have to worry about subscriptions or pay-per-view, anything like that. So thanks very much for getting involved. And thanks for doing that. Um, we've got more showers across the country today. So just start off with that, with the radar picture from the weather outlook. Um, a more general area of rain across east of Scotland and north east England. Some of this is producing snow. There's a company of snow across parts of south east of Scotland at the moment. Then we've got these bands of heavy wintry showers with a mix of rain, hail, thunder, sleet, snow, lightning. You name it, it's going on in these showers and they're moving southwards into central and particularly eastern parts of England through the course of this afternoon. Some very vibrant colours in there indicating some uh, really quite torrential rain. Again, lightning, thunder, hail, it'll all be going on. Maybe some sleet or snow over higher ground as well. So it's a proper cold, wintry and uh, unseasonably uh, nasty day really for the very end of April. Still so have a look at Central England temperature, see uh, how that cold night that we had on Wednesday night into Thursday morning has affected things. And this is the latest CET uh, return from Hadley. This is provisional up to the 28th now, and we're standing at 7.8. So we've lost uh, a couple of tenths of a degree, an anomaly of um, 0, 0.0. So a bang on average in terms of the anomaly. This is, of course, to uh, 61 to 1990, that old and cold temperature average that encompasses the um, really cold decade of the 1960s. Compared to a more modern average, it would be even cooler. And this is going to be corrected downwards as well. So I do think we're going to get a cold of an average month um, when we come to tally up the final figures in a couple of days' time. It'll be interesting how uh, much cooler of an average it turns out to be. It won't be a huge anomaly, I don't think, but it's certainly going to come out under average for um, not just the central England temperature, but for the UK wide temperatures as well the first time this year that that's happened UK wide. Right, let's have a look at the coming uh, month then. So we're going to start off with the JMA model, then we'll have a look at CFS V2. These are the 500 bit of our heights broken down into weekly periods from the JMA model. The first week period will take us from the 29th of April through to um, through to the 6th of May. So it's kind of a week that we're currently in. But that extrapolates to low pressure and yellow, orange, red extrapolating to high pressure. So we still see a lot of blocking here over the top of the pole through the course of the coming month. And then the trough of low pressure is under, coming week I should say, the trough of low pressure is underneath it. There's one subtle difference though compared to the pack we've had recently recently, which is that um, above average heights, a ridge is building to the south around Spain and Portugal. So that starts to lift the jet stream northwards. There it comes. It's still unsettled this, but because the jet stream is lifting northwards, despite that, there's still quite a lot of northern blocking, temperatures will be lifting up. But averaging it all out, probably still a little bit cooler than average in the course of the coming week. Week two, going from the 6th through to the 13th of May, uh, looks like this. It looks very unsettled with a trough of low pressure in across much of northern and western Europe. So that idea of that pressure's building across Spain and Portugal, that doesn't uh, last very long. That pulls out into the middle part of the Atlantic by the look of it. And then we've still got quite a bit of blocking up over top of the pole. So the upshot again is that it's turning the flow something like that. It looks generally pretty cool and unsettled there as we go through the 6th through to the 13th of May. Not great signals to be honest. 
And then we go through to week uh, three and week four. This taking us from the 13th through the 27th of May. So more or less to the end of the month and also to the end of spring. It still looks unsettled, but there's a subtle difference here. The trough is generally centred to the west, which means that the jet stream and the flow should be doing something like that. So we should be starting to bring in warmer air, uh, certainly milder air, but potentially warmer air from the southwest. So maybe temperatures lifting up as we go through into the second half of May. However, it still looks unsettled. We're still very close to a trough of low pressure, so you'd expect showers or longer spells of rain to, to continue there. Just that we probably go from cold rain to uh, warm rain. Let's have a look at the mid latitude view. That, of course, the Northern Hemisphere view, looking down at the UK from the pole. Um, this is the mid latitude and tropical uh, view. So, again, start off 500 millibar heights. This is the tropics um, just here. And then we've got the Northern Hemisphere to the north of the tropics and the southern hemisphere uh, to the south. You can't see the polar regions. We've just looked at them, so we don't really have to look at them, have to see them. But the, pole, the poles are here. The North Pole uh, is off the chart at the top, and the South Pole would be uh, off the chart down to the bottom bottom and the uh gf uh, the um uk with this is generally centered uh, in the very far top right hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it so we'll start off with a mid latitude uh view um this is the uh trough that's very close to the UK during the course of the coming week. We have got that little bit of a ridge building down from southwest, which just lift the jet, does just lift the jet stream a little bit to uh, the north. Um, but temperatures are still coming out cooler than average. This is the temperature anomaly, and that's coming out again quite significantly below average during the course of the coming week, despite the fact that jet stream very gradually starts to push up uh, uh, to the north of the country. The precipitation, only that's coming out wetter than average, so cool wet basically sums it up for the coming week. Uh, week two, this going from the 6th through to the 13th of May, it places that trough of low pressure over the top of the country, of course, with the ridge that was around Spain and Portugal in uh, week one, pulling out into the middle part of the Atlantic. Uh, it means that the temperature anomalies for week two, again, coming out cooler than average, nothing exciting going on there. And it also looks wetter than average again, above average rainfall there, going up to the middle part of May. And then finally, week three and week four, finally for the JMA model, um, that places the trough low pressure still around the UK, but centre slightly to the west, which means we should have a little bit more of a westerly uh, or southwesterly influence. So you expect temperature anomalies to be lifting up, and they are. We do go uh, closer to average, maybe even hinting at being a little bit above average there in the second half of May. So definitely a size of an improvement in the temperatures as we get through the second half of the month. The precipitation, though, that still remains above average, so quite a wet May coming up, if this is to be believed, with all weeks throughout the month coming out with wetter than average um, anomalies. So, uh, there is a recovering temperatures taking place in the second half of the month, but it does look a very unsettled month. Uh, let's have a look at CFSB2 then, see how that is stacking up. We'll start off with the 500 bill of our height anomalies. Again, broke down to week pits. The first week bid taking us from the 29th of April through to 5th of May. Uh, trough of low pressure close to the UK. Ridge building down to the southwest. And then we've got all of this blocking up to the north. So a perfect agreement here between the JMA and CFS for the coming month. Um, for the coming week, I should say. Uh, very good agreement there. Blocking to the north. Trough of low pressure underneath it. But the difference, again is that the ridge is building around Spain and Portugal, which does lift the jet stream a little bit, but it still looks generally quite cool and unsettled for uh, the coming week. We go through from the 6th through to the 12th of May, week 2, that place in the trough of low pressure a little bit to the west of us, with a ridge building across eastern parts of Europe, still lots of blocking up over Greenland. I think overall this should be turning a bit warmer. It's still very unsettled, but it should be turning a bit warmer as the flow begins to shift into the south and the southwest. Week three. Um, now this looks different. This is uh, very different to what the JMA was showing. Still lots of blocking here over Greenland, so still loads of red up there. But the difference is that a ridge is building through the UK. This is going from the 13th through to the 19th, with the trough being pushed out into the middle of the Atlantic. This would start to turn winds into the south, I think, and it would definitely be turning warmer, and it would be significantly drier here 
as well. Very pleasant week there if that was to come off, despite all of this blocking that's sitting up to the north. And then finally, week four, going from the 20th through to the 26th of May, it turns more on south again. That trough of low pressure deepens out in the Atlantic. The ridge starts to get, starts to get squeezed down to the south. And the jet stream's returning through the UK rather like that. So after a drier, potentially warmer period there through the middle part of May, looks like the end of the month turns cooler and more unsettled once again. Let's have a look at the temperature anomalies then. This is week one, going from the 29th of April through the 5th of May, coming out significantly colder than average. Week two, however, the 6th through to the 12th of May, does show temperature anomalies becoming a bit warmer. So generally going a bit above average for England and Wales, a bit colder than average for Scotland and Northern Ireland. Week three, again, generally looks... Uh, a bit warmer than average. That looks a very pleasant week there, but CFS is predicting from the 13th to the 19th. That could be a real taste of spring weather. It's been a long time coming, of course. Um, so round week three, uh, middle part of May, it might turn significantly drier and warmer through that period. However, as we go through to the end of May, it all goes a bit wrong and the temperature anomalies are going cooler than average again as the jet stream returns to the country. Um, precipitation anomalies, finally. So week one looking like this. Generally a bit wetter than average in the course of the coming week. Week two also looking wetter than average. So despite the temperatures lifting up in week two, uh, 6th through 12th of May, but it does look significantly uh, wetter than average. Week three turns a bit um, drier than average to the south, near normal elsewhere. I think that would be drier than average across the whole country. I think that looks like quite a nice week there through the middle part of May. And then it's a weak signal, but week four from the 20th through 26th of May probably hints at going a bit wetter than average again as the temperatures cool and the jet stream returns. So there is one pretty nice week in there with the CFS. We don't really see it on the JMA, however, but the CFS does have one fairly nice week there uh, around the middle part of May. It turns drier and warmer for a time. It doesn't last all that long. The jet stream returns with the low pressure towards the end of the month, but just for a time around the middle part of May, we get a warmer and drier interlude but overall it does look like quite a changeable month coming up and probably when you average it all out i would suspect temperatures not all that far from the average but remember the jma is more unsettled significantly so with all weeks coming out wetter than average and it's also colder as well so it doesn't look like a great may by any means it doesn't look like a, a classic month but um probably an improvement on what we've had in april so that's it for uh, JMA Friday for this week. We'll do it again next week, of course. Tomorrow it's a weekend forecast. Come back for that. And if you get any of those heavy wintry showers today, remember you can uh, send your pictures. You can tweet them to me at Gavin Partridge on Twitter. You can also email them to me at gazwellvis at gmail.com. And uh, I'm more than happy to feature them in the videos. Right, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.